false teachings at the time and uh, they were teaching and demeaning the power of Christ and even teaching about believing in angels right. and other stuff. And Paul, even if he was in prison, he wanted to edify and encourage the church and build up their faith that, hey, we need only one person here. We need only Jesus. Amen. He is sufficient. He is supreme in all things. And let us read um, chapter 2 and let's start with verse 1. Let's start with verse 1, but our main verse for today will be Colossians 7 to 7. For I want to know what a great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea, and for as, as many as not seeing my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, and attaining to all the riches of the full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden and treasures of wisdom and knowledge. For now that I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words, for though I am absent in the flesh, and I am with you in spirit, rejoicing in your good order and steadfastness, your faith in Christ. Let's say this again. Steadfastness, church, let's say this again. Steadfastness of your faith in Christ. And we are in 6. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, in as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Praise God. This is a very great word for all of us, not just as individual believers, not just the, pe that, not just the believers in Colossae, but that the believers of the community Christian church. Paul is saying and encouraging each and every one of us that we have to be firmly rooted. Firmly rooted, being built up in Him and established in your faith in Him. Where is this faith? Who is this faith? He is our rock, Jesus Christ, who is the living God in this church. Praise God for that. And indeed, at the time, Paul is encouraging each and every one of the Col um, Colossians. Being deep-rooted in here means that we have to go deeper. Deeper in Him. Seeking Him. Finding Him all the time. Not just during Sundays, but every day. Deeping rooted, just like the tree. When the storms come, the tree they will be beaten off. You know, branches will be broken. Everything will be broken. But you know what? Not the roots. If you are deep-rooted, then the roots, again, for a particular time, it will rise up again. It will bloom. It will have new branches again. Just the same thing with us people. Brethren, when we are deep-rooted in the Word of God and in His presence, regardless of what is happening in our lives, we're not going to be moved. We're going to arise above it. Because the roots that we have, we are always feeding. Remember, the tree, the roots are looking for water, for nutrients. Just like us, we're going to look for that nutrients which is all in the Word of God. This is all we need. And the same thing that Paul is saying to the people in Colossae and to all of us today. We don't need anything. We don't need anyone. <laughs> We only need Jesus Christ to be faithful, to be obedient, and to be in his presence all the time. Why Paul said this? Because he had experienced him. 
He knows him well. If Paul knows this, we can and we are. Why? Because we are also submerging ourselves in the presence and in the His holiness. Amen. This is all we need, church. Not just on Sunday, but every day. That's why we could hear all the time that we have to be firmly rooted. We have always to spend time with Him. We have always to seek Him. We have always to flow in the presence of His Spirit. Because this is where we could experience Him. This is the great encouragement for each of us today. That indeed, in His presence, there is always victory. In His presence we have always the strength to move on. In His presence, we are always the, the blessed, the redeemed. And this church is having Him all the time. Jesus Christ, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, from everlasting to everlasting, His name is to be praised. He is in you. We have the victory always in Jesus. And remember, that Jesus Christ that is in you is the risen Christ that lives in each of us. He conquered death, he had victory, and so do you, and so do I. That's why, that is why today we declare that church is victorious. That church is amazing. The church is growing. The church believes and lives in Jesus Christ alone, whom we give glory, praise, and honor. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to his name. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to his name. Hallelujah. So today, Lord Jesus, thank you. As we start, Lord, as we continue Lord, the service today, let your Holy Spirit dwell in each of us, in this place right now, in every heart. Lord, let every heart, Lord, thirst, hunger for you. Let your, our eyes, Lord, be open and our ears be open to you. Because this is your day. And your day is every day. Amen. And we praise you, Lord, for your goodness and in your presence in the lives of our brethren in this church. Blessed be the name of Jesus, whom will give honor, glory, praise, thanksgiving. Amen.